Hi all, in the last video we have created an AWS Freeter account. Now let us make use of that account to create a virtual machine. So you might have various different needs where you want to test some software which you are trying and then you might need to do some of your DevOps practice or whatever it is, we need machines and uh, Amazon simplifies the machine creation and that's what we are trying to do today. So first let us log in into the AWS account using the credentials which we have created. So let's get started. Once you have successfully logged in into your account, the page which you see, the landing page which is appear on the screen right now is basically the home page and from here you can navigate to various different services of Amazon. So now as today's agenda is basically creating a virtual machine, let us get started by creating a virtual machine and as I specified earlier, you can use this for various different purposes. So for this video, I'll be creating an Ubuntu machine and uh, let us see how it goes. I'm clicking a service and from the service you have a compute section and from here I'm selecting an EC2. And now from here you can create your virtual machine. So if you scroll down a bit you should be seeing a launch instance. Now I click on this launch instance and then I'm all set. So this page which you are seeing right now is basically showing you various different operating system images. Amazon calls it as Amazon machine images or AMIs to be very specific, right? And uh, we'll be selecting an Ubuntu 18.04. So in this page, what you are seeing is your virtual machine sizes. So you can select various different machine sizes which Amazon supports. But for this video, let us try to select a free tire eligible virtual machine which is T2 Micro. This is a machine with one virtual CPU and one GB of RAM and that should be more than enough for what we are trying to achieve today. I'll click on next, right? So in this page, it will ask you the details about the network and all the other configurations. But at this moment, I think you can ignore this and I'm proceeding further. So in this page, what you are basically seeing is your hard disk details. So if you want to need more storage or if you want to add some more storage, you can add it over here. But for this moment, I'm not going to change. I'll stick to the 8 GB, which is default over here. So these tags, tags are key value pairs. Uh, you can use this for various different purposes. One of the easiest purposes, the tag information is displayed on the EC2 instances pages. So let us assume that you create multiple virtual machines and, and uh, generally you will not see the name of the virtual machines there. So it is easy to identify your virtual machines by the tags which you create. There are various different purposes but for now I think that is a major purpose which you can think of. So I am adding this very simple tag over here which I will call it as learning. Now. So Amazon, what it tries to do is, whenever it tries to create a virtual machine, it will close all the ports. Now, while creating the virtual machine, you have to tell to Amazon what are the ports which are required for your communication. And to be very specific, you need to tell your IP addresses also. So in this scenario, we'll be trying to create a virtual machine, which is an Amazon, and we will be accessing it over the internet. So for that purposes, we basically require a couple of ports to be open. One is a 22 port, which is basically used for SSH communications. The other one is HTTP port, which uses AT. So let us try to create a new security group. I am calling this as open SSH and HTTP. You can put the description over here. Opening HTTP and SSH ports. So there is already a rule written by Amazon which helps us in connecting SSH from anywhere. Let me make a similar kind of a rule for a AT port as well. So I'll go ahead and you see HTTP over here and over here I'm selecting anywhere and let me click on preview and launch. 
So in this page, you will be seeing various different details of the selections which you have made so far. If you want, you can change any settings, right? You can edit it from here. But for this video, I think we are good so far. So I'll proceed further. I'll click on this launch. Right here, something interesting happens in Amazon. Basically, the username and password based authentication is not supported by default. That is a user configuration. So what Amazon recommends is creating a public key and a private key. So right now what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a key pair. So when you create a key pair, you get a couple of keys, a public key and a private key. Now in this, what happens is the public key will be with Amazon and private key is something which we'll be downloading. Later on, we will use this key for logging in into the virtual machine, which acts as an authentication mechanism for us. So let us get started. I am creating a new key pair. Let me call it as Ubuntu and download this key pair. Now, this PEM file, which is basically being downloaded, is a private key. And Amazon has an equivalent public key stored with Amazon. Whenever you are logging in into the machine which you are trying to create, the keys will be compared. If the keys are matching, then you will be allowed to log in. Otherwise, you will get an error. So, let me click on Launch Instance. Once I click on launch instance, Amazon starts creating a virtual machine. Now if you see over here, we got that confirmation. Now if I click on this area, in this page, you are seeing your machine's information. Right now the machine is in pending state still. We'll wait till the status becomes running. So if you observe on the screen, you will be seeing tag information, you will be seeing some other information, useful information, right? But for this video, not much of this is useful. We would require a couple of informations. One is what is the default username and what is the public IP address. So let us wait till we get that information. So now the status has turned to running state. Now let us log in. Let us slightly scroll down. If you see over here, I have a public IP address, right? So for this machine, okay, if you want to find out a username, basically, if you can click on the connect, you will be seeing a username over here. And the best part is Amazon also constructs one SSH command line for you. Now, let me copy that SSH command line. I'll be using a git bash to log in into this Linux machine. There are various different terminals which you can try, but I'll be using a git bash. If you also want the same stuff, you will be seeing basically a video very soon from us which speaks about how to install various different essential softwares. So from that you can find it out, right? Yeah. Now let me open git bash. And I have to go to the folder where I have my pem file. So let me go to the folder, my folder where I have pem file is. Downloads. Now I'll be pasting this command. Okay, it is asking for the confirmation. Do you want to connect? I would say yes, I would want to. We are all set. The machine is created. We are able to log in into that. Now let us try to finish our last formality, which is installing an Apache server into this. So for this, what you need to know is a couple of simple Linux commands. So let me expand my screen. I'm executing sudo apt-get update, which updates Ubuntu packages. Now I have typed the command, which basically helps you in installing Apache, sudo apt-get install Apache. I click on enter. That's okay. We're all set. Now let us see whether the service is working or not. The most easiest way to check whether Ubuntu is working or not is just browse to the site using the IP address. Right. So the public IP address of your Amazon's machine is over here. You can try with the IP address and also you can try the DNS name. So I'll be using IP address in this. Let me basically paste my IP address and click on it. So you are seeing a Ubuntu default page. 
that's it this is how simple you can basically create amazon machines so that you can use them for your purposes right and don't forget to terminate your instances once you have done using the machines i hope this video is useful for you guys and let us proceed with this journey and i'll be adding various different useful videos to you guys thanks for your time